Good? Uh, judging criteria, we've gone over this a little bit, but just keep in mind. Execution, how well it was built. Innovation, is it creative, novel, uh, market potential, uh, and usability. So just keep that in mind. I know you guys are all ready to go with that. Um, we have an amazing panel of judges uh, right here in the cool seats, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, starting with Mike. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Albert and School. I'm actually one of the co founders. Uh, previously to Albert and School, I was a software engineer at SlideShare, and we got acquired by LinkedIn. Uh, Albert and School uh, is a full stack software engineer, so we train um, software engineers to to do whatever they want in like the full stack spectrum and we actually do a lot of artificial intelligence and deep learning uh, and so you know that's why like we are in touch with like a lot of experts and some of them are building bots um, so that's why it, it makes sense um, for us to assist this event. Um, enjoy! but it's a platform for launching personal bots and the most recent one that we put out was Messina Bot. And I just joined the BetaWorks Bot Camp program, so I'll be going to New York as one of the inaugural teams in that program. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Kari Johnson. I am a reporter and I write about chatbots. And I work for VentureBeat. Uh, so also, um, I also wrote about artificial intelligence occasionally. And this concludes my introduction. <laughs> for our companies. Uh, we are in the customer service uh, uh, industry as well as automobile and uh, we are getting into the box so I'm really looking forward to uh, what you got. Cool. And thank you again to all of our judges for taking the time out on Sunday uh, to come out. Uh, just one more round of applause. Just saying thank you. Alright, are you ready to, ready to do this? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, oh, we're just kidding. We don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Surprise. All right. Uh, first up is. Can you put up the lineup just so we? Uh, yeah, we'll be announcing it. So, real estate assistant is first, and on deck is the family style bot. So, if you guys can come up, kind of sneakily over here, and we'll get you set up. Hello everyone, uh, we are a real estate, uh, estate assistant um, team and uh, uh, thank you for having us here today and we built a, a real estate board for those who uh, despite already uh, find a property in, in Bay Area particularly and uh, um, now I'm going to show you a short demo that, uh, uh, that shows how a user can uh, answer uh, several simple questions and bot will uh, uh, using uh, artificial intelligence uh, will uh, search and will uh, provide uh, it, uh, to user some data. Okay. So we using uh, we using a natural uh, language process, so you can talk to bot naturally. So here you uh, you just type you need a room and. Uh, what uh, asks you some question that it, it, it needs to search for search. So here, uh, what's uh, ask about location, about budget, about pets, and user answers yes, and uh, any other options. Our user <laughs> wants laundry in unit as well. Uh, but you, uh, but uses uh, but but search uh, on uh, most popular sites websites. And uh, here he found a couple rooms uh, according to this search criteria, and 
user can see. <laughs> now it's very list only. <laughs> so a uh, user can uh, add to wish list, and also user can subscribe to any uh, new updates that a uh, uh, board will uh, find uh, by the time uh, according to uh, user uh, search criteria. Okay, so this is uh, this is the end for user. Also, our bot is designed to help landlords to post their ad to our database, and our, our demo bot guides a landlord for posting a simple ad to our database. So, landlord wants to list some house, bots ask it questions, and then adds the post to database. So uh, here, uh, a bot leads a user to uh, through a simple uh, workflow to uh, add some data. Uh, landlord can uh, can add a location, uh, photos, and bot will build uh, bot shows uh, the uh, the post it, it built uh, for for user with uh, data, and uh, user can uh, see it and and publish. Thank you. website for uh, for real estate and uh, in future we're gonna pull uh, up uh, our own uh, on database uh, because now we we need to uh, make our, our platform uh, good for uh, for landlords because landlords don't want probably right now to post uh, our data so now we want to uh, get some uh, tenants and after that <coughs> we'll, uh, we, we're supposed to have some landlords in our uh, own database um. Do you, are you planning on doing any recommendations for landlord or uh, people? Actually, in future, uh, we uh, probably will help uh, will help do some auction uh, when uh, when there are a lot of uh, tenants for one property, and also we uh, we're gonna provide some uh, help with background search for uh, for uh, landlords because it uh, takes a time. And uh, uh, also, it saves a time uh, for users because users, don't, if a user uh, looking for property for a few months, and you know, uh, uh, he don't need uh, to search every uh, every day uh, websites and uh, face to the same search result, but will uh, will update with every new uh, every new data. So you're going to auction off popular listings? We don't have it yet, but we plan. Thank you. Okay, so next up is the family style bot, and then on deck is stop dating bot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, good evening. I'm Brian. Um, these are my colleagues, Eugene and John. We're here from Galvanize University, uh, part of the Masters of Science and Data Science program. And we decided to solve a common team problem, the hangries. So you, we've had a long day in school. Um, we're all ready to go and grab something to eat, but we just can't agree. And we we're so hungry and we just oh, can't decide. So we built a group chatbot that allows us to do group ordering made easy. So I'm going to kind of demo that right now. Okay. So here I am in the Slack window for our team. I will cheat you the command so I don't forget what to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite my colleague Eugene into the window, or into the chat window. 
Oh, there he is. Oops, sorry about that. Yes, see that? Got it? Yeah. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to invent, uh, invite our bot to the window. So here's our bot. And I'm going to say, hey, bot, we're thinking about some lunch. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I want to be invited to the list. So uh, add me to the list. Oh, and I want to be part of the, the lectures too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we are. Okay, so given that it's just two of us, uh, how, what kind of recommendations do you got for us? Oh, they're really pretty good. So we kind of got three different restaurants. Uh, we got a Thai place, a dumpling place, and a Chinese ca or Vietnamese cafe. And then for each of those, we got two dishes. Hmm, seems fair enough. Uh, that seems good. Let's go order that. So here we go. Just like that, all on its way. So that takes care of lunch. But let's say it's a couple hours later, and we're interested in dinner. So let's let chatbot know that. And let's start a new order. <coughs> oh. There we go. I want to get lunch too. Okay, Gene's in there too. <laughs> okay. Oh, but this time we have our colleague Anne. So we're gonna actually. She also wants to come. So I'm just gonna tell chatbot to end uh, at our colleague Anne. Oh, that's done. <laughs> Okay, let's see what chatbot has for us now. And real quick, before the demo ends, uh, we can see that the recommendations have changed. So the idea behind that is now we have a new contender, which is uh, this Indonesian place with different restaurants, and also now recommends three, three items. So uh, we're actually machine learning people. This is our first ever bot. So we decided to like jump into here. So this is kind of like a hello world for bots. Uh, we used a group recommendation um, algorithm called least misery. So similar to how Netflix makes individual recommendations, this is for groups. And the idea behind that is to recommend the restaurant that is that will cause the least misery for the entire group. It's why hackathons have pizzas. <laughs> if you enough people in this algorithm, it'll come up with pizza every time. <laughs> oh, and for the recommendations, it does it could work on incomplete information. It doesn't need to know everyone's exact preferences for everything. It can fill in the blanks by figuring out what least misery, and it will try to do recommendation upon that by kind of inferring if someone like this would they like something else. How are you actually or, like doing the orders? Where is that happening? We haven't done that yet, so that's an implementation detail. <laughs> that's our next step, is the actual implementation. Uh, but with like rise of food service ecosystem in San Francisco, it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, for example, Caviar has the option for having group baskets. So you have the notion that one person owns a credit card and owns the basket, but their friends can jump in on that basket. So I imagine that we could just integrate with Caviar at the very least. And the business model can be... Uh, sure. The business can be, model can be built upon this where uh, you take a small fee for every time you send orders to Caviar or other food uh, services. Cool. Yeah. What are you guys using for NLP? Oh yeah, so um, the question is what are we using for NLP? Not much. We didn't have that much time. We focused on the machine learning and getting the bot up. So all we're doing is kind of just keyword extraction of the phrases. But eventually we'll go for the, the semantic content of the conversation. That, should, that kind of like, other bots are good at that. We were kind of focusing on new things. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. So next up is Stop Dating Bot, and on deck is Bot Tender. Bot Tender, come on here. His name's really awesome. Hey there. So bots. Bots are supposed to free us from uh, tasks we don't want to do. And what's more unpleasant than breaking off a relationship? So the Stop Dating Bot um, will actually. Uh, break up with your uh, soon-to-be ex for you. It handles all the texting and follow-up questions and the guilt and the uh, shame and all that kind of stuff that might be involved. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, 
So Effie here, she and I have been dating for a little while, but I think she's sick of me. So she's going to go to stop.dating, um, which is the actual URL that's public, you can try it out yourself. And then she's going to text uh, 443 to reject. And it's going to ask her a few quick questions about me, about her situation. Now, this is running over Twilio. Usually it's pretty fast, occasionally there's a lag. We're going to, we're going to give it a second here. Go ahead and say hello again. Yay, demos. <laughs> There we go. So it's asking her her name. And now she's, it's going to ask her my name and my phone number. Now since we can't actually, um, oh, fun times. Uh, well, because of the delay, uh, it thinks that hello is my phone number. So we'll just pretend my name is hello. Um, she's going to enter my number there. Now since we can't impersonate uh, caller ID for text messages, what we're going to do is come up with a plausible situation why uh, I might need to be texting her at a different number. So it's going to auto-generate a text for her here. She's going to go ahead and click on that. And then that's going to go ahead and generate a text to me. Um, my name is Hello. Uh, and I'm going to receive the text, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then she's going to go back in there, and she's going to say, yes, she sent it. Um, it'll come up in prompt her, but just to save time. And then um, it's going to show her how to block me. We're going to skip that and just say OK. But it would have been uh, context sensitive uh, based on if she's on an iPhone or an Android. Um, and then she's going to say OK. And, and then she should be good to go. So I'm going to unplug her here. Mic drop. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's going to text me so we need to talk and say, What's up? Uh, you know, we, we do have a bit of a lag here. Uh, again, it's meant to simulate real uh, conversation. Um, so it's, it's not working out. Uh, I don't want to see you anymore. And I could say things like, I love you. Um, I'm just going to keep words here because we're running out of time. I, if I say love you, it'll be soft on me. If I say what happened, it'll say it doesn't really matter. We need to move on. If I swear at her, it's going to tell me to calm down and be mature about this. <laughs> like um, so, so, ah, the sweet uh, bliss of singleness without the messy conversation and feelings. Because what are bots good for if not reducing them a complex emotional ordeal to a well defined set of tasks without mercy or remorse? <laughs> Is uh, stop updating. Do you adapt? Um, do you adapt the, the first sentence to uh, the person? Do you have any uh, information about the person you're sending that first sentence? To? Um, so we have. Uh, uh, we only get the name. Um, we don't even collect the gender. Um, but all of the messages, like there's actually a whole bunch of messages. I wish I had more time to show you all of them. Um, I encourage you to try it yourself, but um, they are totally <laughs> balanced and generic. I, you know, use it wisely. Uh, but they try to uh, they try to be balanced and generic. Um, so you know, things that you know try not to be too harsh, but you know, also make it clear that there's no no room for uh, things to change. And it's based on it's based on the conversation. So like, again, if someone is like asking what's wrong, I thought everything was fine. It goes in a different direction than if someone you know, is like very upset or very lovey-dovey or you know. You know, ask is this fake? Um, it actually you know, handles that as well too. So um, it's not the whole point is I don't want to know why you broke up. You don't have to think about that. You just know it's done. <laughs> why do you think ones would like to do this through a bot? Like, what do you think of the advantages? Um, well, the advantages are you don't have to uh, look a person you care about in the eyes and ruin their life. Um, you don't have to hear their voice as, they, as they, they, they cry over all the things that are gone now. Um, you know, it, it, the, the idea being that uh, it's, uh, it can be really difficult to break up with people. And, uh, you know, in this, in this age we live in, let's, let's let the machines do the work for us. And do you think you could read it for the contrary if you want to ask a girl or a boy on a date and you're too shy? Or maybe you want to do a contract and maybe AI is going to be better than us? That probably requires a bit more finesse. Um, I think when you're, when you're breaking up with someone, it's maybe okay to seem a little bit like a robot. Um, if you're trying to entice someone, uh, maybe having a little more depth would be, would be valuable. So, um, five seconds left. Um, I know this is uh, business uh, that is part of this, so imagine an affiliate link for OkCupid or Match.com. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, there, there's ways to commit money.
will stop. Thank you, bot. Uh, so next up, uh, we're moving to number six, which is bot tender, and then on deck is Abadub. So I'm Mike. Uh, this is Omar. I'm a designer and developer, and, uh, and he's this developer. And uh, we came here uh, with no code, but we have a concept of building a virtual computer. And uh, here, and we built a new method today, basically. <coughs> So this is a fictional restaurant that we're going to use called Guru's Grill. I took it from the Minions. Um, so I just put a guy there because this is vertical. But um, <laughs> you got hello, and then you have enemy gifts saying that welcome to Guru's Grill. His name's Kevin. He'll be serving you tonight. Would you like to hear about our specials today? Following that, I mean, this can be something that's controlled by the POS um, that can be sent back out. Um, in this case, we'll be real quick. But um, he's ordering a BF30 emoji. He said, never mind. No, he wants two. So I've got two blue moons coming up. So you can see AI recognized that, um, you know, it canceled the last order. I think one benefit of AI is that it can filter menus. This is something that uh, waiters can do as well. So um, they have all the knowledge of the menu and the restaurant um, and requires no training and will never get tired. So uh, as you can see, I had to fit there right here. This is actually pretty easy to implement, but <coughs> you can pay for it. I have it right to a link because of security. Um, I think this is how some people do it too. Um, basically, that went through, this will go through Stripe. In this case, I'm actually split in by item. So I just want to pay for my minion meatballs and my blue moon. So there you go. Um, here's the Stripe uh, interface. And um, there's a test uh, Stripe. And lastly, we have a little feature here. It's my friend's birthday. And um, he wants something special. <laughs> so initially, I have this integrated with Spotify, but I didn't know it was appropriate. But um, there you go. Uh, so that's the use case I, that we can do as well. So here's the work. Yeah. So uh, the original problem we were trying to solve is, uh, you know, on a busy day when you go to the restaurant and you want to order something and you got to wave down the server or you know, get your check and you just want to leave. So we thought it would be the best way to solve that issue is to text um, directly from your phone and be able to pay off your check and just get out of the restaurant as soon as possible. Uh, we implemented uh, with uh, Clover, which is a POS. Um, they uh, let us uh, use a development kit. Um, obviously, it's a, a proof of concept. We could also use it for uh, you know, implement with other POS systems, just like we uh, implemented Clover. and. Um, yeah, it's also, uh, from the restaurant standpoint, it's also a beneficial um, uh, product for uh, minimizing the waiter, uh, how many waiters you have. You can shrink the size of uh, how many waiters you have with the AI that we implemented in the bot. Um, it can actually work better than the waiter uh, with some of the knowledge uh, in, the, in the menu and so, so on. And that's pretty much uh, it. It's the chart right here that we have comparing uh, different solutions. So is the plan to use customer device or restaurant device? <coughs> so, right. well, uh, the device would be it would be from SMS, so from your personal phone, and then uh, we would integrate with uh, the POS system, whatever they have. Uh, for today, we uh, integrated with uh, Clover. Because they're both open, but um, we take SMS because uh, it has a lot of least friction uh, for customers to onboard. Is is there a, like a plan for the? for the restaurant to have somebody who's got like a phone on them as well in case someone is texting like, hey, you know, this this isn't working well, I actually want a server to come over? Yeah, uh, that's a good <coughs> idea. And um, in fact, back when we were e uh, working at Elon Car together two years ago, we had these tablets that were Chili's or Applebee's, and uh, we had this tech day project where you implement the uh, Android watch, basically buzzes uh, when you call a server. So yeah, it's definitely possible. And we can put other information on there too. Yep. And what I like the idea uh, about the most is that you can actually intercept uh, AI to talk for it, so in case something goes wrong. Anything else?
All right, so next up is uh, number seven, Abadub, and on deck is number eight, Amino. Hi, um, hi, this is team Abadub. I'm Kunal, and my colleagues are Tal and Sebastian. And uh, Abadub is a content suggestion bot, and it, it knows the user's activities and information, and it suggests content based on the user's activity. Yeah, so I'll explain what a content, a conversational content delivery bot is. It's actually a brand new technology. So today, if you're on the web, you have to remember a whole bunch of different web pages for different types of content, and you need to figure out their individual APIs, your search interfaces, and it's kind of complicated. So we decided to really simplify this quite a bit. And uh, we implemented this Facebook bot that understands your situation, understands it in its totality, and suggests good content for you to spend your time on. So. Sebastian uh, will demonstrate a few examples. Hey guys, uh, so I introduced myself as uh, Kunal to uh, Abadub, and Abadub asked me how my day was going, and uh, I told Abadub it's going well, and I'll be going to San Jose later today. And so Abadub's really smart, and uh, thinks that I should listen to some music on my drive down. Um, as you noticed, Abadub didn't recommend uh, videos uh, to watch or text to read. Uh, as I'll be busy in the car. So I'll let Abadab know uh, what kind of music I'm interested in. And uh, Abadab recommended a link right here from SoundCloud, so we can open that up. And since I uh, asked for Drake, not surprisingly, uh, I can immediately listen to Drake on SoundCloud. Uh, and now I'll introduce myself as uh, Tal. So this is a new user, just a break. Yeah, and, uh, and so Abadab again will ask Tal, uh, you know, how's your study going? And Tal seems to be in a pretty good mood. So he'll tell Abadab it's going well. And uh, Abadab says great, and we'll ask him, you know, what's he up to today? And uh, uh, Tal's uh, taking it easy, so resting today. And uh, so Abadab's smart and knows that he's relaxing and maybe uh, recommends some articles that he should read. Um, and ask for what type of uh, topic you'd be interested in reading. So Tal will um, read some sports today to take it easy. And so we have a link from NPR. We'll go in there and uh, we can read about uh, the Euro 2016 or, or Wimbledon and take it easy on Sunday. Uh, I'll introduce myself to Abadab. And Abadab will ask me how my day's going. Uh, and uh, you know maybe my day's not going so well, so I'll uh, I'll uh, express my true feelings to Abadab. <laughs> and uh, Abadab uh, feels for me. She's very smart, or whoever Abadab is, it's very kind, and uh, sent me a YouTube link. So I'll go there for a relaxing three-hour uh, video of California Ocean Waves. Thanks very much. Why um, you decided to go the route of asking the person questions when maybe some of this data lives somewhere, like say their Google Calendar, for instance, um, to know where they're going to be or what they're up to? Why, why ask the person? Yeah, so it's a combination, right? So we assume that we're going to take uh, information from all different sources, right? There is certainly a, con uh, a conversational component, right? And a lot of it may not live in Google Calendar, right? Where the information about how I'm getting from San Francisco to San Jose for my next meeting may not be available in Google Calendar, and that's the kind of examples we're, we're showing here. And we also, you know, in the fullness of a product, right, would also draw information from a lot of other sources, right? So for example, you saw, like, it was, I don't know if you noticed, but it was identifying the day, for example, right? So that's an example of something that is outside of the conversation that we're drawing from. There's a lot of different sources of information that we consider that we can draw from as well. What's your business plan? Yeah, great, so that's a great question. Uh, so as you saw, we were providing a lot of content links, right? So there's definitely an affiliates model, right, that we can build here where we, if we, if Abadab becomes the next number one way of retrieving information or just finding the perfect information, right, there's gonna be a lot of users and they're each gonna go to YouTube or go to, you know, we have an Amazon plugin which we didn't show, right? Uh, of course, the SoundCloud and so forth, and that's going to generate a lot of affiliate revenue. There's also kind of the other side of this, right, which is the actual content providers can build 
Avada plugins, right, which describe their content and kind of show how they can um, monetize their content. Or also <coughs> advertising. Allows us to monetize revenue. Yeah, there could be some advertising. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Um, so did you see a three-hour California ocean because that's your preference when you're sad? Or is that just, does everyone get shown a three-hour California ocean when you're sad? Right? Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> so this is where we can, you know, so, so currently this is a prototype. By the way, we should mention that we started from scratch, right? So currently we're using some basic input to machine learning to get this kind of a model, but there's much, much more to it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Oh. Okay, so next up is uh, Amino, number eight, with Zupi on deck. Yeah, if you're on deck um, and you're coming up to see Francis, uh, she requests only one person comes up uh, since it's getting a little crowded over here. And then, uh... Okay, guys, so I'm sitting down because I haven't eaten lunch today and I think I'm going to faint. So, um, actually, let me just start saying that um, I found out a few years ago that I had hypothyroidism, uh, which isn't fatal, but it's one of those things that you suddenly wake up one day and you're 20 pounds heavier and you have no idea where it comes from. And so it's been over the last couple of years, and I've sort of, you know, challenged myself, and I've gone through all of the cycles of denial. You know, I turned 30 a few years back, and I'm like, shit, this can't really be happening. And so the process of trying to tell myself that my metabolism has changed, and I need to be able to, uh, to know more efficiently about what I'm eating, how I'm tracking on the things that matter, particularly because of the diet <coughs> one. And so, I've tried my fitness pal, I've tried a bunch of these things, but the friction for me to actually keep on that consistently or actually really try to learn what it is that I'm eating is really high. Um, and the tracking process just feels like, for me personally, it's onerous. And what I realize I need is just somebody, actually, Shield's my best friend, so often when we're hanging out, I'm like, actually, how many calories do you think are there in that? Or, you know, you know that I'm tracking to like 50 grams of protein. Um, do you think I'm there yet? So what I realized actually as we were talking about the botathon a week ago was what if like you could, I mean this is exactly what bots are good for just to tell you um, just to be your friend in this journey. So I'm going to get on this quickly because I know I have little time and bear with me I'm going to talk by the keyboard. How many calories in a cup of oats and a cup of coffee? Okay, I ate that. Well, I'd like to track protein. I'd like to track protein. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, let's have a look at today's summary again. You know what, Ashley? Stop tracking fats. Facts, but facts. Okay, it's slow. Facebook has been acting out. Okay, so, sorry? Okay, I'm going to continue. Track cholesterol. Awesome. So, now, um, I've had breakfast. I want to know what it is that uh, I can have for lunch today. So I'm going to try, I have eggs, spinach, and goat cheese. And actually, now I can see a bunch of recipes. for today, but really what I anticipate this doing is either having an app, which just has a dashboard, I really want this to be my conversational interface, 
or being able to connect it to HealthKit via an app, because suddenly this just makes all of that really easy. Um, and you know, the thing that you can actually do in terms of dashboarding, I mean, so right now we're doing search, track, and setting goals, and I didn't even get into that. You can set goals, you can change goals. Um, I mean, basically does a whole lot of those things, but you really get into the content and community, uh, and the content includes dashboards, recipes, uh, you know, if I'm on a ketogenic diet, oh, what are other people on keto? I mean, I'd be literally obsessing about this stupid keto diet and a bulletproof coffee every morning, that kind of crap. But uh, anyway, that's a little bit of that. Do you <coughs> provide your condition and then it adapts everything to you? Not right now, but we can do that. Or that's sort of the next step for this. I actually want to build this for myself from my keto diet. It's really, I mean, and then you can actually think of paleo and every other time. I mean, if you can start off with a few combinations and then build it for something greater, um, it really starts personalizing it. So you could have recommended uh, calculators or goals which, you, which yeah. can be even shared across the community. Where are you getting your data and is it hard to get? So actually, um, we're getting the data via Houndify. So we were actually going to build some of the parsing ourselves. And when we came here, Houndify told us that actually they parse this from USDA. And so we've used their system for this. Um, thank you, guys. Um, and actually, the, uh, the thing that we might actually have to do is go to Fat Secret or some other databases because their database is more comprehensive. And the recipes is coming from another data source. And we are also, we were almost there for the demo, but uh, we are also able to take a picture of like a label of nutrient label of any item which might not be in any public database and it can kind of parse uh, out of it. Out of the so Google we almost got that, I think. Next up is number nine, Zupi, and then we're jumping to number 11, Host Buddy. I'm a current college studying computer. I'm a current college student studying computer science. I'm here with my team, Asif and Peter. Uh, we're here to introduce Zuby. So when I picture a bot, I want to be able to talk to that bot. I want to see something like Bender from Futurama. I want to have something super engaging, like, "Hey man, what's going on?" And that bot is responding to me in this super engaging way. Right now, our technology is up to date as Alexa, turn on the lights. Navigate me here. You know, I want to have something super engaging, like something I would see on TV. So if I was here and I was like, hey dude. So let's say <laughs> I've been at a bot for the past two days. Zoopy's like, dude, you should start going to the gym. It says, I'll be like, uh, yeah, man, I'm not getting the time. All right, so it's telling me, hey, Looks like your friend Alan, who you're friends with on Facebook, also doesn't get time to go to the gym. You guys have time in your Google Calendar from Saturday from 9 to 12. Maybe you guys should go to 24 Hour Fitness. Go to Chipotle afterwards, because it's right down the block. Don't get the sour cream, because there's a lot of calories in that. And I say, nah. Don't feel like Chipotle. <laughs> All right, I can go to Burger King. <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right, looks like Stephen Curry is going to be in the area. He's giving a speech. I have a YouTube link that can show you his MVP speech from last year. I say, are you for real? All right, I'm going to say, hey, or I'm going to say, dude, book the ticket. Done. Alright, I can say, okay, okay, headed home now, after the hackathon. Alright, looks like because of the recent shooting in Dallas, there might be some sort of traffic jam locally, because a lot of people have been uh, protesting stuff like that, so my way home. So my daily schedule is, I'm usually on campus until around 6 or 7, I'm doing homework. It's saying, hey, why don't you do your math homework first before you go home? 
You know, because I want my best friend. This is my best friend. He's looking out at my best interest. You know, I say, good idea. And that's it. Yeah, and all this, all my tasks, it's been saving all my tasks in the back end. Because my best friend's also my productivity tool. Thank you. All right. Okay. Voice adapt. <laughs> Sorry, like the, the does the voice, the personality of the bot, adapt to who you are? Because like this is obviously like, hey bro, like if I were chatting with this, this is not my best friend. So uh, the original idea that I had was we would have different personalities you can talk to. So right now I figured this is the personality I can figure to because I talk like hey bro and stuff like that. That's my best friend to me. But over time you'd have different personalities you can talk to. So depending on how you talk, it's going to talk back to you in the same way. So you really want to be individualized to you. So you're saying that I will have to pick the personality that I think I will be a good buddy with? So yeah, we'll have a couple of personalities that you yeah. think might okay. fit best with So you. as a user, yep. I'll, I'm picking the guy. So basically, from Facebook, from Facebook, we know that you're a man, woman, boy, girl, and we can, can actually predict. Right now, we have not thought through that feature, but it is possible. Sorry, I noticed that you had uh, a message about you know your friend um, also has time available. Are you asking people to authenticate to Facebook and also to authenticate cal their calendar? Like, where are you pulling that information? How are you able to do that since Messenger doesn't give you that info? Yeah. So basically, we are expecting that. Uh, so we are expecting that people will start signing up because uh, we will have a reality built into the product. And uh, we will actually, because when you log in, you are using a Facebook ID, you will know at least that who are your friends. And behind the scenes, with your permission, we'll be able to figure out. So whatever information is available, we'll be able to uh, map with your consent. Um, the virality feature in the beginning is like, hey, you know, like which one of your friends you want to invite when you don't have any, and that's where you get it spread out. When they log in, they log, they connect with their Google calendars or other calendar tools that they use. What's your business plan? So, so just quick yeah, answer. Two seconds. Just, pass. Okay. So basically, you already, <laughs> yes, you already know Asana and Trello. They are going towards enterprise. And a uh, uh, personal consumer site will start free, and then we see there's a premium uh, feature we can add, like okay. Chipotle and other features. All right. Okay. Let's see, next up is Host Buddy, and then on deck is uh, the CRM bot. Hi. Uh, my name is. Uh, Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Salvador Gola. Uh, I built uh, iPhone apps in the past for the hospitality industry, and today I want to show you the uh, host buddy, which is a virtual concierge for any business, whether it's a small or a big, um, uh, over the Facebook Messenger. And uh, we love Facebook Messenger because it's uh, free basics, and there are already so many people already using it. And uh, uh, let's look at one use case. Um, uh, this is basically, uh, for example, the concierge services, you can make appointments and you can manage the uh, listing and rating and things like that, ordering. Uh, so, uh, in the, most of the developing countries, uh, even to go to a doctor is like uh, very similar to uh, uh, going to a DMV. You, you get a token, you wait around, and then uh, when your turn comes up, uh, you basically uh, you, you, you go there. Instead of that, oh. <laughs> uh, so in the messenger, and we are, uh, there is a host buddy. Uh, we are spoiled by Google, so I want to go to a Docker called Penicia. is a fictitious doctor and then you send a message, 
and uh, it looks it up, and then you can check in. And then you get a confirmation on the doctor's side. So you have the people who are coming in. And for example, when your turn is ready, uh, you basically notify them. You can do a send message. And it notifies you or the Facebook. And then you don't have to wait around. And also, you can uh, rate the service. You can provide a feedback. Probably the Panacea is a quack. Maybe you can say it's bad. And then you can do a submit. Uh, and these are all very authentic, the people who went to that facility. And uh, so these are uh, some of the basic uh, concierge services that we provide. Of course, we also have experience with the POS systems. This example that we built is mainly for the people who don't have any front desk, and they can set it up within minutes. And uh, uh, it's good for the business, and also good, in the, good for the consumer. Any questions? All right. Would a restaurant or a doctor or whoever's on the other end, would they be able to maybe like deny a reservation if the person isn't close enough by? Uh, so in a sense, like 20 miles away. Yeah, the, the thing is basically uh, it's up to them, but uh, they can notify uh, like 10, 15 minutes. The, our service lands based on the venue, based on your position in the queue, uh, based on the time of the day, the day of the week. And using the historical data, you can predict. And if you are not reachable, yes, it can. Okay, you can it. It can be other. So right now we predict the time. We don't deny them, but we give the opportunity to cancel. So HostBuddy is an app that already exists, right? Is that Host Me? Yeah. HostBuddy. That's Host it's already an app, right? Uh, 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 Next seat is an app. Oh, okay. A uh, host buddy is the chalk map. The, okay. So um, I was just curious, how are you directing people into the messenger experience? Like, are you taking them from the app to messenger and then back, like back and forth, or what's the the route? Uh, right now, so basically, the people who are using our app, they can continue to use our consumer app, but uh, some of them, it is easier to engage with the messenger. So, yeah, uh, right now the consumer is uh, mainly the uh, messenger or uh, text message. And so are, are you integrating with uh, the existing CRM that the restaurant and doctor are using, or do they have to download your software? Uh, we have a Clover integration uh, and uh, Ravel and Squire and uh, some of the leading uh, POS systems. So, yeah, but please, uh, Beyond going from the developing world to the developer world, so there are app fatigue. There are so many apps. One app to make reservations, for example, open table, one app for the loyalty points, one app for ordering, one app for the reviews and everything. So everything can be integrated in one umbrella called host Thank you. How's everyone doing? Okay. It's a little hot in here. The AC's not going, but we're all having a good time, so it's, it's okay. All right. Uh, next up is CRM Bot with Interview Bot on Deck. Hello, everyone. My name is Ethan. So I used to work for SAP for a long time, CRM space, and uh, it's rare to hear people like those uh, enterprise softwares. They're hard to use. and. Uh, the salespeople want to close more deal instead of uh, using the system to keep updating the, for the sales manager, manager to check. So today, what I'm going to build is a CRM bot that's actually going to assist the, CR, the salespeople. And uh, I build it on top of uh, Slack because uh, everybody loves Slack. So what's going to happen is I'm going to ask, like, what's my day like today? It's going to tell me what's my upcom up upcoming meetings. Uh, yeah, so I see that I have a uh, discuss deal with some Paulson medical device. I'm gonna say more about the first one. So this is uh, I'm gonna more about the first one.
Yeah, sure. So scissors contextually, no one talking talking about, and they say that they have an open open bands of uh, nine hundred fifty four dollars. And uh, since it's contextual as well, I can say I'm going to navigate me there. It's going to pull me and give me a, a Google uh, Maps and tell me the lift ETA is 10 minutes. I'm going to order a lift. And uh, after the meeting, so the bot is going to tell you, ask you, hey, how did the meeting go? So for, uh, for salespeople, adding a note is very important because they want to track everything. So I'm going to say add the note, uh, I just closed doing a dollar deal. <laughs> So what happened, you see, it's like when I say that a telebot just closed a million dollars, it's going to post my news feed so that all the users know that I just closed a million dollars. So all, all my, everybody knows that. And uh, what I integrate more today is uh, I also integrate four contacts. So you see the CRM, you want to know uh, persons uh, like me. I just integrate it. It's, it's going to say, oh, it's Ethan. It's, oh, he worked for Vimo Labs. And I can say, Company info, Vimo Labs. It's going to tell me uh, it's more about Vimo Labs. And what else I integrate is so a channel. I use this as an account. So since I focus this as a B two B CRM system, each channel is treated as an account. So I can actually make a phone call here. So that's how I, I don't have to enter anything. It's going to track everything for me that I make a phone call before to this user. So it's going to call me. Uh, so I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, so it's a trial account, so it's gonna. So what's gonna do? Is, uh, so you're connected. What's happening is uh, it's gonna transfer. Huh? Uh, nothing's happening. So I just say I can say I just closed a million dollar deal. Uh, it records some, some of the stuff I just said earlier. So I'm going to hang up now. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's serial. I'm going to want to track everything. And uh, here I can quickly switch back while I talk on the phone. Right. Thank you. What CRMs are you? Where does this data go? I just I don't want to. There's other company that's integrating water uh, CRM system. So what I want to do is uh, I check this Trello sales. Uh, they actually open this Trello board saying that what kind of functionality wants. Sales is one thing they want, really want it, and I don't want to integrate with other people it's because it just I don't want to be cut off, and I want to, I want to focus on more small business. So what I'm integrating with that I'm using, <laughs> I'm preferably using Gmail, Google, uh, Calendar, everything for the backend system. So I think telling that is great, but what other um, feature are you thinking about? Of course, uh, there's predictions. That's uh, definitely something I want. So if you're able to input a lot of information. So one feature you can see that you look, constantly check your schedule already. So when you finish this meeting, it's going to, hey, it's going to ask you whether you finished, how did the meeting go? So you can add a note directly. So you remo re remember. The next thing is a prediction. So you can ask, what's my top opportunity? And, uh, in CRM, the old CRM software is always hard to drill down. It's very hard to use, but instead of using natural language, it's so easy. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next up is uh, the interview bot, IBO. Um, and then on deck is Jif Chat. Hi, um, I'm here as an interview board. Actually, the reason why we built this is uh, we work for a recruiting company and they have this big problem. Uh, when you post a job, you get like hundreds or thousands of uh, resumes and you don't find matches and because we don't even know what is there in the resume is actually going to be there. Next, please. Uh, so it's uh, used for initial screening of candidates. It's not actually a full interview solution. Um, what we do is uh, bought for coding tests. We give, uh, we use a very uh, simple interface for doing the coding test. Uh, what it's not is uh, you know complete interview solution. Um, so essentially, the IBO talks to a couple of other bots, uh, but this is the chat bot. Those are ones that are gathering information. Uh, the next one. Um, 
we already had a, a basic code part built. We use an engine called a Spear engine, which you can send about 60 different languages. You can send programs and it will test it and then bring back the results. Uh, so, the, but the limitations were very simple interactions and, and we had everything hard coded in there. Um, so, Nick, in this we are we made a few changes and so I'll skip through the slide quickly and then go to the demo. Um, yeah. So, what happens is when a candidate sends a resume, we scan the resume, pick the top skills and send them a link. And then when they click on the link, they land in this bot. Uh, they start with a greeting and then how would you like to begin and you know, we tell them what, uh, whether they want to take some problems. So we give a coding problem and uh, you can, they can enter the code and then test it. And then after this the code, if they're happy with it, uh, they can submit it. And once they submit the code, uh, it checks out whether this whole thing works correctly or not. Yeah, at any point in time, you can also skip um, a test. So when you give a lot of tests, some of the tests can be skipped, which you know tells us something about what the candidates know. Once you finish the coding, uh, we move on to. Uh, so we're going to skip this one, and uh, so we ask a few more questions. So let's say if somebody says, "I know Python, I know Django, I know Flask, I know JavaScript." So we ask them some informational questions: How long have you been working on this product or in this in this technology? What kind of uh, knowledge do you have about, you know, what do you think are some popular features? The biggest problem we noticed is a lot of people list lots of languages, but they don't really have very good knowledge of those kinds of things. And so this, this does the initial filtering. And then you have to talk to only a few candidates who qualify, and then we give some ranking in the end. And we also gather information about other things that they do. Like by looking at the type of code that type, we can figure out what level of programmers they are. And um, these are all uh, simple questions, but they don't have to necessarily write code for this. Thank you. So, what do you think is the main value compared to your competitors, such as Codality and stuff like that? Coding. Um, so the main value essentially is we customize uh, the interview questions based on their skills. So we scan the resume and get the um, top three or four skills, and then we customize it. And then based on the number, we we don't look at what they mention as their skills, but we look through the project experience and pick up all the skills. So we know if it's a, like a two-year, or three-year, or five-year programmer, they have to be up to this level. And so we design the problems based on that. Then we pick it up from a database and then send it to them. So it's very, very customized to them. The other thing they can do is if they don't understand the problem, they can ask for help. So that is one thing. We can do a couple of other things too, uh, not necessarily for interviews. It can be a mock interview where they can train for interviews using this kind of product. What happens if you don't qualify for a specific you know, skill that a job is asking? If, so that is initial screening. Then it is left to the recruiter to figure out well, you still want to get get because you may have a lot of other skills, so they can put them for because we analyze the skills and store it in the database. When a new job comes up that matches those other skills, they'll get a different interview. Do candidates get feedback on how they have done and where they correct? We, yeah, we do, we have a rank. We will give them some score <laughs> on the based on the number of questions they skipped and the way they answered. Uh, right now we have a very simple model of just additive score, but we can also analyze the code and we know, for example, how an expert Python programmer or a Java programmer codes versus a beginner codes. So based on that, we give them feedback. They can also ask for feedback, and that is not something that we have done in these uh, two days. So there's a lot of machine learning that can go into this to anal analyze how people handle problems, and that is the knowledge that we want to give. Okay, thank you. Next up is Jivchat, and on deck is number 15, Pilot. Oh no, is Pilot here? Is Pilot here? Pilot's out. Next up is Listener, number 16. So uh, we're presenting with an application called Jivchat. 
which is a fun game that you can actually play inside Facebook Messenger, uh, including graphics and multiplayer chat and stuff like that. But it's actually also a very good language learning tool. So I'm going to start it off, and we built everything this weekend. So we've got a couple of different things in the game. So if we start off with a <coughs> single player function, um, you start off and the beginning is just like name that pick. So this is a very simple, I hope I get it, I hope this is right, it's a heart. Um, oh, it's love, sorry. <laughs> that was quick, okay, meh, next. Um, let's try again. Um, so, um, what's this guy doing? So basically, he's, it, you describe pictures. Um, and what we do is we actually look at the text that people are putting in. The text actually gets posted over to a Facebook page and it, we can have like crowdsourced people uploading new pictures to be part of the quiz or uh, upvoting comments and things like that. And then we, we're going to apply machine learning, we haven't finished all of that this weekend, to actually allow people to type in all kinds of dis different descriptions of the pictures. Uh, so this is a simple a paint picture. So this is the single player version of the game. Um, if I get it wrong here, I'm just going to bounce out. So you get a score. Um, as you're going ahead. I'm just going to get that one wrong. It tells you at the end what it was, so you have to get a long streak. Okay, now we're going to play multiplayer. So, uh, uh, Lewis, who's a co-programmer on this thing, are you going to join the chat? Okay, you're already in. So basically, we're, all re we're able to um, chat to each other through this, and basically Facebook, um, we we've implemented pipes to allow uh, two messenger clients to connect together. Um, do you want to send a gift to me? Sure. You can also send like random gifts and things like that inside the chat as well. So it's kind of like chattable, but uh, with a lot of extra uh, power-ups. What on earth is that? Oh, yo, yo, yo. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yo, yo, yo. So if you get it right, I think that one's pig. And uh, bingo, that gets right. And then we have a whole bunch of other features inside the game. Oh, we've got a little bit more time. So uh, we've got two points. Um, it should go ahead and give us should have given us another image, but we have a little bump thing there, because demos always go wrong, to hopefully give us another image. Is your Wi-Fi dropped? Maybe. Uh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, looks like we've got a bug over here. All right, well, let's talk about the uh, slideshow stuff. So basically, it's a combination of a really fun uh, multiplayer game, but the actual business model is about uh, language learning. So people can enter these sentences, and other people can judge them, and of course, because it's a Facebook page, um, we could actually have uh, real teachers and live people in here behind saying, um, I don't know if that's a really good language learning example, but um, you could actually have live teachers in here helping people to understand what, what the phrases are and what the pictures are that they're learning. Thank you. Uh, the last one was a live image that he typed in, and then we're using just a Giphy URL to send it back into both clients. So, I mean, Facebook Messenger is a one-to-one -one or one-to-bot um, system, so what we've implemented is a kind of a mirror reflector that allows him to send a message to our server that comes back to me, and any messages I send to the server go back to him, so we can have these kind of group chats. How did it end up being identified as a pig? Because that was wee bear. Bears. Oh, the pig is we we actually have a whole bunch of. Uh... Oh no, no, the bear, right? No, that one was a different one. The pig oh, was the previous one. one. Uh... It was another pig. Show him the pig. Sorry, it's uh... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the first one was a pig, right. and then he, right. after that, he sent me the image as part of the chat. Oh, so the idea is we play a game, but while we're playing the game, we're also sending like hints to each other. And it's actually, it's a collaborative game, like a lot of games are competitive, but in this game you both get points if you get it right, so you're actually trying to help each other, which is really good for an educational game, I think. Um, but we basically have a database of stuff to prime the pump, and then there's also, in future, um, you know, all the crowdsource stuff that gets added to the, to the actual Facebook page, because people think Messenger is just chatbot, it's actually, chatbot is kind of like an endpoint, whereas the page is a way of kind of, you know, crowdsourcing a lot of content that can go into it. And then the comments with likes are a signal for our machine learning algorithm to tell that this is a, a correct interpretation of the sentence that goes with the image. So will users and users who are adding photos to the, to the page actually also be saying what the answers are? 
Um, not at first, we hope. What we were thinking is that in the title you could put keywords, so it's not completely transparent, but then after people add a bunch of comments, sorry, after people respond to the answers, those go into the comment feed and then other people upvote them. So basically, first off, it ends up, it's like a cold system and then it gradually warms up as people kind of approve, <laughs> approve them. Next up is number 16, listener, and on deck is Ask Hillary and Donald. Hello, um, so I'm Nick, and this is Armando, and we built the listener bot. <clears throat> so we had a pre-existing bot, but over the weekend we decided to start fresh. Um, so we came up with listener, um, and it essentially allows people to have an anonymous conversation with the person who cares. So the problem that we're solving is uh, many times we like to have a personal talk about a rough day, you know, and we might not want to bother our friends or, you know, we might not want to be judged by our family given the content of whatever that day was. So we created a listener as a way to facilitate anonymous conversations between a listener and a messenger. Um, let's see. We envision listener as a personal connection with one person that you can chat about anything with. Someone who is there for you to listen and is always on your side. You can talk with a listener about work. You can talk with them about play, stress, and love. We essentially think of listener as therapy for the modern age. And uh, Nick's going to run you through a demo. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So I open my listener bot chat window. I'm just going to say, hey. And... Uh, Okay, so listener, basically when you start the onboarding, listener will ask you how often do you want your listener to um, keep checking in on you. So I'm really needy, so I'm going to say daily. And um, you can say like what time of day, so I'm just going to say evenings. And so that gets configured. And okay, so it says it's finding your listener. So um, now this is the dashboard that like a listener would have. So I'm going to say, hi, Nick. My name is Samantha. How are you doing today? And then it goes straight to the messenger platform. Um, so basic, basically, the conversation can just keep going uh, kind of organically. Um, and we think like for a revenue model, maybe for each message the person sends to the listener, um, maybe for each like 100 messages, it, the platform would charge like $5 and the platform would keep like 20% and the, um, the listener would keep like 80%. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. I love the idea, um, but basically the bot is only doing the onboarding part, right? Like the, the, the first question. And then it's a human who is interacting with the person, right? Correct, yeah. And I think people are incentivized to stay, keep messaging the bot because there's maybe a thing of anonymity or anonymity that you want to keep through Messenger, right? So some people are like more um, serious about privacy than other people. Um, so if you just talk to someone and it's kind of faceless, then um, it kind of like helps protect you and you feel like you can say anything because it's about like the personal connection you have with the listener. Yep. Does the bot come back and check in on you about anything or are there like follow up questions that help the listener on the other end to be able to better interact with you over time and is it the same listener every time or does it route to whoever's available? Yeah, so it's best if it's the same listener, right? Because you want to curate like a, a connection with somebody. Um, but, I mean, these people are not going to stay up 24 hours a day, right? So we'd have to figure out some way, maybe if your listener's not available, you get routed to another listener and, like, the bot would let you know that. Um, as far as, like, oh, as far as, like, having, like, quality conversations, um, it'd be important, I think, to, um, keep, like, a, for the listener, they'd have, like, um, like, notes and stuff like that in that chat window. Um, and... Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I think there should be like a rating system. So if you hate your listener, 
uh, you can mm -hmm. get a good new one. Yeah. Do you do a recommendation of listeners based on the user, and if so, how? Yeah, so I think, um, like at first, you'd probably just like get paired with a random one. I think the rating system would be important for like keeping quality in check. Um, but I think it should be random because it's more about the person who's being listened to than the listener. So. supposed to do and that's demoing on somebody else's computer so uh, wish me luck. Uh, I'm David Colleen at Sapien X. We're a conversational AI platform. We've been hard at work on our platform for the last seven years. Uh, working with me on this are Hira and Nicole and uh, we our goal is to add conversational interfaces to a wide range of consumer products. We're already working with people in uh, the automotive space, uh, robotics, uh, consumer electronics we wanted to expose, for the first time, what we're doing in a public site that would be fun. So, I hate watching television about the election because they never give me the, they never answer the questions that I have, so we decided to build a site to do that. And uh, we're going to uh, hopefully demo it properly. Uh, let's try some questions. Um, oops. I'm going to allow that. What do you think about same-sex marriage? And this is why you never demo on somebody else's computer. Um, what's your energy policy? Yeah, we're not getting anything through. Yeah, we pause it for another video. You want to refresh the page? We can try and refresh it. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, it sounds like we're not getting audio here either. You did too. Let's try it again here. Oh, what's your position on same-sex marriage? Yeah, we're getting nothing. We uh, also have um, uh, a platform here based on uh, this is a HTML5 running uh, WebGL. And we also have an Android client. So our goal is to have a conversational AI platform that doesn't force you to learn a command language. Siri was good in her, in her day. Move over, Siri. Alexa's pretty good at the moment, but move over, Alexa, and Viv. Uh, we want a, a system where you don't have to learn a command language to interact with the technology around you. That's our goal. We're trying to make it very simple to implement, so we've also done something that nobody else has done before. We're building AIs for our customers with our AIs. So our customer sits down and has an interview process with our AI, and it dynamically generates a new AI for them. So you're going to be seeing this coming up in products soon, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Please check out the site. It's uh, ask. HillaryMcDonald.com, and it will go live tomorrow. So uh, there's time left. I was going to have you ask questions of the characters, but I guess we're not doing that tonight. Um, we can do it. You can technically go on, on your route. Where do you get the data for the characters? Uh, we have uh, four different artists that we work with. So everything from um, uh, this is these characters were done by Charlie Powell, who's an illustrator that does work for the New Yorker and Wall Street Journal and places like that. We also have uh, very realistic characters, and such as uh, Alfie here. 
we're going to be, in two months, releasing something that we call Mini-Me. And this will be our first full public beta. And the idea is you can make your own character. We have um, the ability to take a selfie, and five seconds later, it generates a 3D avatar of yourself or wherever you took the picture of. And our goal is to let people just run amok building their own bots that can talk and they can share them with other people. Now, uh, this is a way for us to torture test our system. Remember, our goal is to embed in consumer products. So uh, uh, this is a way for us to really work out the bugs before it actually goes into a shipping product. So where do you get the data for the answers of your characters? Uh, OK, so let me talk about what we did. Uh, the, the website and the characters were built before we came here to the bottom town. The scripting of the questions and connection to the audio files was done right here in the bottom town. Uh, there are 400 different sound files representing snippets of their speeches that we're using. Now, normally our system is fully conversational, so you get a synthetic voice back, but we thought it'd be better for this particular site if the, if the uh, candidates spoke in their own voices. How do you keep track of when the candidates change their opinion? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. So uh, I won't single out any particular uh, candidate here, but Hillary changes her mind quite a bit. So uh, our, our decision in, uh, in which clip to use for Hillary was the most recent one. And uh, we tried to be really neutral here, um, which is interesting. I, I've started drinking heavily after working with Donald's clips, but uh, it, it, have fun with it, okay? And if it breaks, let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next up is Potato, and then on deck is, uh, I just lost the screen, but it's, two, it's Oxy, Oxy, who's also, I believe, the last, the last team. Hi, uh, my name is Joan, um, and our product name is Potato. Um, I did not know how to write bots until like three days ago. I have used it before, here and there, in my work, um, and thought it was pretty useful and fun, but never thought about building my own. Um, one of the biggest reasons was, it was kind of hassle to learn how to write a bot, and, or how to like modify other people's bots, or find a place to deploy it. That was like was the biggest problem for me. Um, that was how we got the idea for this platform, Potato. We envision a platform that any users can easily set up, deploy, and manage a bot. People can come to our website and import their Docker-based uh, bot images and set up them in just a few, few clicks. Uh, another important feature is people can share their bots um, through our platform. In this way, people who are not familiar with bots can set up their own bots. Um, that was uh, our intro. I'm going to go to the start the demo. Uh, so this is our um, main page. Um, it lists all some of the existing bots that people already shared. Um, let's say um, I want to add a new bot. Uh, click this and put a name for it. Um, demo Slack bot. And we should. Uh, we need to provide our Git repo URL. Um, we uh, we made a fork from the a basic um, bot kit um, bot kit repo and made little customization of that. So we copy this URL to the Git repo section and put uh, some descriptions on it and put put some uh, sentence around it like this. Remove this for now, and click create bots, and the bot is created. And if you go to the explorer page, you'll see demos like, oh, I thought I typed down the bot, but it's like boy. <laughs> um, so um, after you deploy, uh, after you create the bot in our in our system, you click plus button, and it shows a list of bots that you copied, and if you click. Um, the green, uh, if you, um, and go to here and put some 
custom customized um, tokens that is to connect to to um, some of the Slack chan channels. And you update it, and now we deploy it, and it it is deployed. So if you go to the Slack channel and talk to which, why are you not there? Okay. Oops, it's not there. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Live demo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, I mean, like, uh, so you are basically providing an host solution to push your slide bot code, is that correct? Um, any Docker based bots, and we just use the slide bot as an example too. And so when you say Docker based bot, like, can it be written in Python, in Ruby, like what's um, an API? Whatever language you choose, if it is a Docker, Docker if, it, if, it, if it can be Dockerized, then it, it can be run as a platform. And like, what do, what, what do actual value to like host my container on your service rather than EC2 like container service for example? Um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, this is so we, we got this idea two days ago and this is really crude angle of this idea and I think there are like lots of open decisions to make. Uh, we could go with the hosting services to strategy or we could um, make it as an app store that people people can explore and share in the box. Um, any more questions? Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Next up is Oxy. Our final demo. We haven't missed anybody, right? No one's expecting the demo. We haven't called. All right. Last demo, we're going to keep it exciting and talk about IT. <laughs> so, in order to stay competitive in today's market, companies have to release software quickly and reliably. The software runs on infrastructure, databases, servers, load balancers, and companies need an easy way to interact with their infrastructure. So, a few months ago, we started building Oxy. And Oxy is really a way to share scripts and run them easily from Slack. So, you can think about it as a shared command line that lives in Slack. Um, and in this, so that we had before, in this botathon, we worked on making it smarter. So we have it listen to events and take action automatically, and David's going to show you how that works. Thanks, Omar. So, as you can see, um, I've pre-programmed Oxy to know how to do a few things. Um, here we go. So it knows how to start and stop servers, and uh, this is pretty much just generic JavaScript code that we prepare the environment, we can talk about that later. Here are my two scripts uh, that just call the AWS APIs to, to create and shut down instances. So I'm going to start one now. And this is going and calling the AWS API, and we can find that server is running. So now all this existed prior to this weekend. What we did this weekend is actually made Oxy a lot smarter, able to respond automatically to events that happen within your infrastructure or your servers. And so I'm going to configure Oxy now to stop a server when it gets an alert that the server has been hacked. So we've configured Oxy to receive all the alerts from your infrastructure, and in this case, respond by running the stop server script when the server is hacked. So wouldn't be a good hackathon without some real hacking. So we're going to go here and we're going to hack this server. Actually, hopefully it's not this easy to hack your server. But, uh, <laughs> but we're going to hack it. <laughs> <laughs> So as soon as the as soon as the server gets hacked, the uh, event gets fired to Oxy. Oxy notices it, triggers the stop server action, and stops the instance. And so if we go back here, we can find that it should be shutting down now. And this is important because uh, not only we didn't need human interaction, actually in an, an event like being attacked by a hacker, you want to respond as quickly as possible. And so this is just one example of when you would want this to happen automated behind the scenes. We could also have things like suggestions. So we could learn from 
from experience from all the events and all the actions people are taking, when to recommend certain actions, or even to ask you if, okay, we noticed this event, we, uh, we, we recommend taking this action, would you like to proceed? Things like that. So anywhere on the array of full, uh, fully automated to, to guided to uh, what we had before today, which is running scripts by typing commands into Slack. So that's what we have. Thank you. What are some of the initial events that you guys think um, will be tracked and that would be really useful? Yeah, sure. So for, for this one, you saw the hack, this, the hack event. So this would be like an intrusion detection system noticing an intrusion, firing that event, and then uh, Oxy responding. We can think of a lot of other ones, things like latency, things like uh, no. scan no. downtime, uh, disk full errors, anywhere from like full, fully low level things to even high level as long as you have scripts that can react to them. Are you thinking about adding some deep learning? Like basically every, every time a server is hacked, maybe I want to show you, maybe not, right? But. So holding off on that, that is a, a to-do list item in the future. Uh, first thing that we need to do is really generate trust in the system. So you don't really want a bot managing your entire infrastructure from day one. Uh, so our initial features are focused on ease of use and getting the organization to trust it, but eventually that's, that's something you want to hire people to help out with. How do you uh, handle multi-user, uh, simultaneous multi-user uh, answering the bot? So answering the bot in terms of if the bot asks you a question or in terms of executing? Your server would hack, uh, stop, refresh, and you have multiple. Uh, you have multiple admin, admin on the line at that moment, so, so we actually didn't show this today, but we have uh, execution tracking. So execution is our ID, and then you can actually confirm things to run and track things by ID. Well, but I think what she's asking is that, say, Audrey decides that she wants to start more server, and I decide I want okay. to start okay. less. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's another feature we didn't show. and. Um, Basically, this we just opened up AWS, which is pretty sensitive to the world. And in order to make it secure and make the DevOps team actually trust it, you need to add policy and you need to audit it and access control it. Uh, and so that's something we're working on is adding policy. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> Great job. Just one last round of applause for the folks. political season, there was one that we all really wanted to see. Um, so we have uh, 10 seconds of it working is what I hear. Off the record, it's what we're doing, or whatever. So I hope it's okay with everyone. Uh, I'm not sure everyone wants to see it. So. It just won't be plugged into the It won't be plugged in, so just, uh, we'll huddle around. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go with the question. Do we have any good questions anyone wants? Okay. What's your drug policy? So I have been working with elected officials to try to figure out how do we put together a new approach, a new law enforcement approach, so that first time low level drug users are not sent to jail. So it does work. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well first, uh, it was a serious honor to be a judge in this competition. I'm sure the rest of the judges feel the same way. Sorry about the snafu on the Wee Bear Bears and the GIF thing. Um, but thank you for the calzones. Got it, the guy in the back got it, thank you. Um, but seriously, there were some very smart, um, innovative ideas that were shared here today. I review bots on a daily basis, and I could really see at least more than one of these becoming a serious a success story. Um, but only one box stood above the crowd. And congratulations to so excited to see him on stage at Mobile Beat later this week. <laughs> <laughs> Bot Tender.
handshake instead of like a trophy. A funny one. I'm pretty sure the judges one are one? here for like something. <laughs> Two other judges? judges want to get yeah. in? Another judges? In the photo? In the photo? Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 please. This was, I had a lot of fun doing this and meeting all of you um, and hanging out for the last uh, couple days. So thank you, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to VentureBeat and to SoundHound for being here um, and to all of our amazing judges. This has just been uh, a great a great weekend, so I thank you all. So, round of applause for everybody. Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, you guys can hang out for a while. We have, I think we might have a few beers left, a couple Red Bulls. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any Calzones left. Uh, but yeah, hang out, have fun. Talk and uh, I think that's it. I think we're signing off. Francis, anything? You got anything for us? Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job.